Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. We are back with another book review. This is going to be what I read in February. So I'm just going to preface this now. This is my filming location. Dun, dun, dun! I'm going to use that to excuse why I only read three books instead of five. We are moving and we're going to be in the process of moving for about two more months and then we are chucking it to Kansas. Thank you, military, for that. So in the meantime, I'm going to try to read as much as I can just for my own sanity, but also because I really like doing book reviews. So hopefully I can keep this up, but let's just get right into it. In order, I read The Weekend Retreat by Tara Laskowski. This was really good. This was my favorite, by the way. Second was An Abundance of Catherines by John Green. This is, I feel like, pretty classic for a lot of young adult teen, but we'll get into that. <laughs> and then I read the third installment of The Summer I Turned Pretty. This one is We'll Always Have Summer by Jenny Han. And also To All the Boys I Loved Before. So, you know, I actually find that interesting that this book says best-selling author of To All the Boys I Loved Before, but that's not what this, that's not the series that this is from. It's from The Summer I Turned Pretty, but I think it's just because that's more popular because of Netflix, so it's just to be a bit more eye-catching. So I'm going to do it in the order of the author title. I already did that. I'm just going to do the overview. I don't think I'm going to read the back. I'm just going to go straight into kind of my plot coverage of it. Then I'm going to give trigger warning, my analysis, and then the rating. So let's go right into this one, The Week in Retreat. This one was my favorite. I read it so fast. I read it within two days. It was a page turner for sure. I really like this one. I wrote down that it is Kardashians meet Gossip Girl, but still a mystery thriller. So it kind of reminds me of the Kardashians because it's a rich family they are instead of <clears throat> excuse me instead of you know lifestyle and glamour they are wine they are a wine business they have a huge winery and they are basically wine moguls and one of their daughters she's the social media head and she made her own company that was like skincare and glamour but she's known for being the wine family's daughter and then her brothers are more so like the business side and then she has a younger brother who's kind of the like Prince Harry where he's just young and hot and parties and everybody knows who he is. And then it reminds me of Gossip Girl because the family is so well known that there is a like a gossip site, very Perez Hilton, very Gossip Girl that covers information on the family. So that being said, the book is about all of the siblings are meeting up at their wine house, the winery house to celebrate the twins. The twins is the business brother and the business sister who has the glamour company. It's their birthday, so all of the siblings and their partners are coming to spend a week in retreat at the winery. And you do have three POVs. You follow the business mogul, you follow the young guy, the party guy, you follow his girlfriend, and then the business guy, you follow his wife. And everybody has their own quirks. You know, the wife of the business guy is very type A. The mother-in-law, the matriarch of the family, passed away the year before. So she's trying really hard to kind of adopt her behaviors and keep up traditions that she made. And their mom was a, a, an interesting woman. So she's kind of adopting that as well. Then you're mainly following. I feel like the girlfriend of the party guy, again, you're following everybody's point of view, all three of the girls, but hers is kind of the main, I feel like. So you're in her head a lot. And then, I don't think it's in first person, though. Mm, yeah, it does. Yeah, every POV is in first person. So you are in their mindset and in their head, which I really love. If there's a multiple POV, I want it to be first person. I want to be in your head. I'm not the biggest fan when it's multiple points of view and it's she did this, she did this because I just feel like there's no need for the multiple, multiple point of view because it's just, just one. It's third. But anyway, getting aside from that, it is one of those things where 
mysterious things are happening and you don't really know why. It's not like a murder mystery, but it's more so who was that person we saw? Who left this here? Who gave us this? And you're trying to figure it out more so that way. But it's not a, a who done it. It's a what is going on? Is this all connected? What's happening? So it was really, really good. It was my favorite. I did put in the notes that I predicted the mystery ending pretty early on. So there's actually one more PRV that I forgot. There's an extra person who was just labeled the party guest. You don't know who they are. They could be a member of the family. They could be a total stranger. You don't know. They're, they're just listed as the party guest. And after maybe every five or six chapters, you get a little excerpt from the party guest and their point of view and what's going on. So I'm not going to give too, too much away, but just know that there's an extra person. We know as the reader that it's the person who's behind the mystery. We know that. We just don't know who it is. So I thought it was really fun. It was a game kind of on our behalf, trying to figure out who it was. I did figure it out pretty early though, but I didn't mind. I, I already kind of knew it. I was like, I bet you it's this person. I didn't care that I figured it out that early though. It was so well written and good. I wanted to see how it played out. Like to me, that was the mystery. I wanted to see how they were pulling this off. So I don't know. I didn't mind that I predicted the ending. But the only trigger warning I would say is graphic violence. There are some parts of the violence that are pretty, pretty gruesome. So if you are sensitive to, you know, blood, gore, then that can be a little off-putting. But it's also very short. It's not a very long, drawn-out thing. So, I don't know. Be warned about that. I give it an 8 out of 10. I give it a solid 8. I think it was great. I, The only reason why I give it an 8 and not a 9 or a 10 is is I did predict it a bit early and there was actually two two things I kind of predicted so it was a little bit predictable but it was still really well written this was a win let's get into my least favorite um I'm sorry John <laughs> I'm sorry I am a huge John Green fan I have read every single one of his books except for this one Fault in Our Stars, Looking for Alaska, Paper Towns, loved them. I loved them all. I read all of the books. I watch all of the film adaptations and show adaptations. And I think he's a fantastic author. I pretty much love all of his stuff. This was so boring. <laughs> it was a very slow story. And I get it. That's kind of the point. This reminded me of the book version of those coming of age indie movies, you know, Lady Bird, Edge of Seventeen, which are great movies. They make great movies, but I don't like them in a book format because they're just a little too slow. It's a little too slow. I know I felt the same way about The Perks of Being a Wallflower. It's one of those rare things where I like the movie more than the book because I think, you know, with added music and the acting of the actors with the dialogue, that's what makes it, <clears throat> that's what makes it what it is. This was just really slow. So I think the biggest thing I didn't like about it, other than it being kind of a slow story, is I just did not care for the main character. It was really hard for me to care about him and to care about his journey into self-discovery. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a terrible sore throat. Anyway, basic overview about this is just there's a guy who is a prodigy, not a genius. He makes sure you know that he's not a genius. He's a prodigy. He has the talent to learn things really fast, but it's not that he just naturally knows them. So he had a little bit of 15 minutes of fame. He won a game show called Cranial Kids where he's super smart and wins money for it. And he has a little money left over from it. But now he's graduating and he feels really lost because he hasn't done anything with his life other than that one show. And on top of all that, he got dumped by his girlfriend who was the 19th. Catherine that he has dated 19th it just so happens by chance that every girl he's dated and has fallen for has been named Catherine it's nothing he's done on purpose and it, it goes all the way from like first grade until senior year including relationships that were only minutes long in elementary school so don't think like he was in 19 serious relationships that's what I kind of thought but no he just counts pretty much every single crush or whatever of a girl who was named Catherine but yeah, his girlfriend just dumped him. So his best friend takes him on a road trip right after graduation. Reminds me very much of Paper Towns with that. Kind of the same thing, same author. 
But yeah, he takes them on a road trip. They have no plan. They just choose to drive until something seems interesting. And they do. They stop in a place called Gutshot, Tennessee. And in Gutshot, there is the gravesite <clears throat> of somebody. I forgot their name. Ferdinand something, I think. <laughs> My bad. But yeah, they go on a road trip. They find the grave of this person. They stop in Tennessee. In Tennessee, they meet a girl named Lindsay and her mom and... Since they don't really have a plan, they're just staying with her and her mom. Her mom gets them a job, like, interviewing people at this factory for the town. So, they take it and they stay. And it's just one of those coming-of-age books where teens are together and they go through the trials of life and discover who they are. It's a, it's a real just coming-of-age book. And maybe if I was in high school... I would have liked this more. Not because it's like written for kids or written for teens, but I just, it was really hard for me to relate to the characters because I'm so far gone from that moment in my life. So maybe that's why. But then I read other teen books and I can relate. So I don't know. This just kind of wasn't it to me. There wasn't any trigger warnings. It's a very simple book. Let's see. Um... I think that's pretty much it for this one. Yeah, I just didn't really care for the characters. I liked the best friend. His best friend, Hassan, he was funny. I liked him. He was the saving grace of the story. Okay, so on to the last one. We'll always have summer. This is the third book, like I said, in the series. And this one, I'm not going to lie, I really, I feel like, can't talk about what it's about. Because <laughs> I feel like that's already a spoiler. But then again, it's written on the back. So, I don't know. I don't know if I should tell you guys. It's written on the back, so I think it's okay. It's, it just feels like a spoiler to me. But Jeremiah proposes to Belly. There you go. He proposes to Belly, and she says yes. And they're trying to work through other problems that they've had in the relationship that we don't know about yet, but you learn about it in here. So, they're trying to work through those issues as well as Belly always going Conrad Jeremiah, Conrad Jeremiah. So it's just all the crap that they're going through with this. Um, this is the finale. This is the final book. And I have so many feelings about it, but I'm not going to lie. I can't talk about a lot of the things I have feelings about. They're spoilers. So you're really just going to have to read it. But of course, if you're reading this one, you read the first two. So you probably already have some ideas about what's going on. But mm, so many feelings. Um, yeah, I, I even wrote down in my notes. It's hard to review without spoilers. I cried twice. Twice I cried in here. Anything involving Susanna makes me cry. I love her so much. Um, this is the fastest I've ever read a book from this series. I read this one in a little over 24 hours. The other books takes me maybe like a couple days. So it was probably just anticipation because I was so excited to finally read this one. But yeah, um... The ending. So, the ending. <laughs> I can't say much about the ending again, but I just need to have a word with Jenny Han about this because was there like a, a deadline that you had to meet and you were running behind or what happened, girl? Because I'm not going to lie. It's like one chapter that kind of commences everything and then she throws in a in a couple years, like a, a couple years later. And I don't know, I just have some beef with those five years later kind of things because I get it, you just didn't want to write another book, but you still wanted to finish the series. So I get that, but I just didn't like how it was done. I feel like that could have been another book or if she didn't want to do another book, I think a certain conclusion could have been reached a lot sooner so that she could have spent more time on the part of the story that happens later. So that's all I'm going to say. Believe it or not, I feel like that was kind of a rough review. But I also give it an 8. Oh my gosh, I didn't give a review um, number for this one. 4. Just so you know. 4. 4 and 10. But this one is an 8. So these two were 8s. I I really enjoyed these two. This one, I'm going to kind of forget it didn't happen. I'm not going to lie. Huge fan of John Green. I want to say that. I love his books. 
that one was a dud for me. But yeah, this is what I read in February. I am already getting started on my March reading list amongst all the other packing that I'm doing and I'm in school. So maybe I cut down from five a month and just go to three. I think three is a much more attainable number. And then once I get to Kansas and I'm all moved in, then I can go back to five a month. But for the next two months or so, we're probably just gonna be getting threes. So I'm already started. Should I tell you guys what I'm reading? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm reading Verity. It happened. Book talk got me. All right. I don't want to see what all the hubbub's about. So I am reading Verity right now and I get it. I get it. It's good so far. I like it. So I'm going to be reviewing that next month. And I also have The Woman on the Ledge or The Girl on the Ledge. I think it's The Woman on the Ledge. I got that one. <clears throat> and I'm not too sure. I'm going to look through my library. That's another thing is I cleared out most of my library and packed it up. So the only books I have out are the ones that I intend to read in the next two months. So yeah, we're going to see. But those are the two I am going to get started on. So you can look forward to that next month. Happy reading.